I'm discovering more and more tools that HVAC techs just simply don't have. Maybe they think they don't need them to do their job properly. Maybe they're just, you know, ignorant. That's something I've run into where some technicians just simply aren't aware of some of these tools. And in today's video, I wanna cover some of the tools that I think are necessary, tools that you cannot do the job properly without these tools. And I know what I've heard a million times. Well, I've been doing this for this many years and I've never owned a Megger. Why do I need one now? And the answer is, if you don't own one, then you just simply have not been doing your job properly. So let's dive into it. Some of the tools that you need to own. Number one is a manometer. It's amazing to me how many technicians in this field just simply, at least in my area, they just simply do not own one. And if you don't own one, there's no way at all you could be doing your job properly. There's no way you're checking static pressures on ductwork correctly. There's no way you're setting gas pressures correctly on a new furnace or existing furnace if you're going to check those gas pressures. All of these things are things that should be done regularly in our career, but some of these things are literally safety issues. If you don't own a manometer and you're not setting gas pressures correctly, that is a safety issue for homeowners. And I'm gonna put a link down in the description of this video to some of my favorite tools, including a manometer. But again, this is something that's necessary. Every technician, should have one in our industry. Number two is a combustion analyzer. And this is probably the most expensive tool we're gonna cover in today's video. But again, there's just no way that you could know that a gas burning appliance, gas oil, some sort of fossil fuel burning appliance, if you're not doing combustion analysis on that equipment, there's no way to know if there is an issue if things are dialed in properly, if the system is running as efficiently as possible. Number three is, I've already mentioned, a megger, a mega ohmmeter, megometer. I've heard it called lots of different names. I call it a megger myself, but that's just because my boss called it a megger. And so what is a megger? It essentially tests the degradation of insulation of windings in compressors, motors. It can also test communication wiring on mini splits, and it does an array of different things, but essentially you're you're testing whether or not that winding or wire is compromised, whether or not it can handle the job, if you will. And when the insulation on the winding starts to degrade, it could eventually short out. And sometimes you can get in front of things. You can go ahead and notify the homeowner, hey, you're going to have an issue here because I'm starting to see readings on my megger that are too low. They're getting lower over time or whatever. You're starting to see that degradation of the insulation itself. And so when I'm testing a compressor, for example, yes, I have my electric meter. I do test the windings and I test the ohms on those windings themselves. I also test them to ground to make sure all that, but I'm also testing with my megger to make sure that insulation is still good in that compressor. I can see if we're about to see a failure. Now, obviously it's not a magical tool. It doesn't make you a psychic. If you are getting a low mega ohm reading on there, I've heard some guys argue, well, well, you know, I'm getting 50 mega ohms on the readings, but I don't know if it's going to fail in three days or three years. I just know that's really low. And I think that's a valid argument. But at the end of the day, without a megometer, there's no way you're going to actually know that there's a problem. Number four is a micrometer. It's amazing to me how many guys will either simply not pull a vacuum on a newly installed system. You're trying to pull a vacuum on that system after you've made a repair and they will simply put their vacuum pump on there or not. I've seen some guys just not pull proper vacuums at all, but some of the folks that are at least connecting their vacuum pump to pull a vacuum on that system, I'm still seeing folks that just do it by time, that they're just connecting it and they're letting an hour go by, for example, and maybe they've got their manifolds that do not test microns properly. Yes, you might have your needles there or your digitals or whatever, but putting an actual vacuum gauge or micrometer on that system, whether you have a one or two hose set up on your vacuum pump and making sure that you're pulling it down to manufacture specs, there's no way you're going to know that you're doing things properly without a micrometer. Number five is that vacuum pump that we already noted, but not just owning a vacuum pump, but also changing the oil in it as often as you should. Some have argued that you can do a few jobs per oil change. I've heard the oil manufacturers themselves say, no, no, change it on every job. I'm not gonna get into that debate on this video, but maybe you have a thought or two down in the comment section. My call to action would be just own a vacuum pump, use that vacuum pump and 
please change that oil regularly so you are pulling a good vacuum and you'll know whether or not you are because you now own a micrometer. Number six is a recovery machine, making sure that you're pulling the refrigerant out of systems like you're supposed to, making sure that you're doing everything you're supposed to as far as recovery and those cylinders, not mixing refrigerants, labeling those tanks and all that good stuff, making sure you have the proper tools to pull that refrigerant out of that system safely and by code. There's plenty of YouTube videos out there on how to do that properly. We may do one in the future, but I don't know that that's necessary. Just please own a recovery machine, use that recovery machine. And as I said, there's plenty of videos here on YouTube that will cover how to properly use it. And even if you don't like any of those videos, a lot of times the manufacturers of tools themselves will even help you. You can reach out to them and they'll either demonstrate it. Maybe they'll have a rep in your area, whatever. But a lot of these folks do want to help. They want to make sure you're doing things properly and they will help you with that as well. I'll just wrap up here quick with a few other tools, honorable mentions that I believe every technician should have. I know some of these tools are seasonal. So if you're down in a very warm climate and you don't have any customers that have furnaces, maybe you don't have a combustion analyzer. And on that same token if you live up in a very cold climate and you're only working on furnaces maybe you don't own a micrometer some of the other tools that I'll throw out there as honorable mentions, there are an array of tools that will give you proper readings on temperatures that I believe you should own, whether it's one of the temperature clamps that you can clamp onto the copper line sets themselves, other tools like the probes that you may be checking airflow, temperature, things like that. And of course, a lot of guys have the infrared tools where they can literally shoot a laser at something and get a surface temperature of that. Just know that these are not created equal. If you're doing one task versus another, you should probably own a few of these tools to be able to get a proper reading on that temperature. Meaning you can't check the temperature of the air with an infrared instrument because it's only checking the surface temperature when you shoot that laser. We've done other videos on my main channel for homeowners where we talk all about that. Other tools that I think are honorable mentions, an anemometer, checking that airflow properly, some of the airflow tools that are out there, also a psychrometer, being able to check humidity and dew point and some of the other things that we have to check in our industry to make sure things are operating properly. And then finally, a refrigerant sniffer, otherwise known as a refrigerant leak detector. All of these tools are good honorable mentions that I think every technician should have, especially if you're working on equipment and wanting to, to do things properly. I'm sure I missed something. I'm sure there's a tool that you think every technician should have. I'd love to hear about that down in the comments section. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we talk about matching some of the new refrigerants, the A2L refrigerant equipment with 410A furnaces or coils. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.